everyone, my name is Rebecca Lawn, and I'm a postdoctoral research fellow at the Harvard T.H. Chan School of Public Health. And today I'm going to try and explain what is Mendelian randomization, or sometimes referred to as MR. Ideally, we would evaluate whether a factor or exposure of interest causes ill health using evidence from well-conducted randomized controlled trials. But sometimes conducting such trials is not possible such as when manipulation of the exposure of interest is not practical or perhaps not ethical. Therefore, we rely on standard analytical methods using observational data to look at the association between an exposure X and an outcome Y. For example, we may want to know the effects of alcohol consumption on blood pressure and ultimately cardiovascular disease. We could use standard analytical methods in observational data to investigate the association between these. However, Individuals who consume more alcohol may differ from individuals who consume less alcohol for other cardiovascular risk factors, such as by smoking more heavily. Without proper adjustment for this, in this diagram represented by a C, we could see spurious associations between our exposure and our outcome due to bias from confounding from this smoking heaviness. There is also potential for unmeasured confounding bias by other factors not considered and represented here by the U. By using genetic information, MR overcomes these issues of confounding and other issues of reverse causation in non-trial designs to provide stronger ability for causal inference. In fact, MR is actually sometimes referred to as nature's randomized trial, in which participants are allocated to different exposure levels due to their genetic liability, which is randomized at conception. Using this genetic information therefore allows us to create groups within observational data of participants who differ for a genetic variant. And if this variant is also associated with our exposure of interest, then we can look for outcomes that co-vary with its presence or absence. In MR, we look at genetic variation from single nucleotide polymorphisms, or SNPs. So going back to our previous example, there have been SNPs found to be associated with alcohol consumption at a p-value of less than 5 times 10 to the minus 8, which is the p-value we use to select instruments in MR. These SNPs are randomly allocated at conception and place individuals into drinking somewhat more or somewhat less alcohol, similarly to how individuals are randomized to intervention or control groups in trials. We can then look at the effect of alcohol consumption on our outcomes such as cardiovascular disease. Because of this randomization, as in trials, we assume that the genetic variants do not associate with confounders in the environment. And as they are fixed at conception, there should not be problems of reverse causation. Overall, MR therefore allows you to overcome some of the potential biases common in standard analytical approaches, as I previously mentioned. And although I've used the example of alcohol consumption here, there are many examples of studies using MR to investigate psychiatric traits. Now that we know the concept of MR, I want to talk through another way to visualize it. And this is using the diagram for an instrumental variable framework with the instrument specifically being a genetic variant. And here you can more clearly see the assumptions of the method. For one, the instrument must be associated with the exposure. So this is the line between Z and X. And this is why we use SNPs whose association shows p-values of less than 5 times 10 to the minus 8. Two, the instrument must not be associated with confounding factors, indicated by the lack of arrow between Z to C and U. Which again, because of Mendel's laws of independent assortment and randomization at conception, we're more likely to meet this assumption. Another assumption is that there should be no direct relationship between Z and Y that does not act via X which we term directional horizontal pleiotropy and something that we can somewhat test for. The actual estimate for MR for the causal effect is obtained through calculating a Wald ratio, where the SNP outcome, so the ZY estimate, is divided by the SNP exposure, so the ZX relationship. And this ratio forms the basis of all MR approaches, which is important to note that there are multiple MR approaches, such as mr Egger or the inverse variance weighted method, which each relax these assumptions to various extents so that we can increase our confidence by triangulating across them. And there you go. That's what Mendelian randomization is.